Hey guys, my name is Nick. Welcome to another episode of Team Minus 365. In today's episode, I'm going to be covering some high level considerations when it comes to the PSA tools and new commerce experience. If you've been following along, I've been doing a lot of new commerce lately just because of all the complexity. I've gotten a lot of outreach to do one specific on PSA, so I'll be unpacking that today and giving you some recommendations as well, too, with all the various complexities we have to deal with there. If you're new to NCE or don't have a high level understanding of NCE fundamentals, I would definitely recommend checking out my deep dive video first before diving in here because I'm making some assumptions that you have some fundamental knowledge about the commitment terms, the cancellation policies, and things like that. Diving in here though, I'm going to start with code terms. There's a lot I'm going to be unpacking here, but I'll walk through a couple different examples and then give you guys some recommendations at the end. So when you think about it here, we have this concept of one Microsoft product that can have multiple commitment options meaning that you can get a monthly, annual, or three-year for certain products. And that's not really new. We used to have this in CSP where you could get monthly or an annual for a certain product. The major consideration now, though, is just the frequency of which you might be having this type of situation in your customer environments, meaning that you could have one customer that purchases a single product but they have multiple subscriptions with different commitment terms. Meaning that you could have business premium here and they could be purchasing monthly as well as annual for a split of the licenses. One, to help you reduce liability so everything's not all on annual, but more likely because you need flexibility for seasonal workers and things of that nature, or part-time workers even within the customer environment. What this means though for PSA tools is that Essentially, within your product catalog, you're going to be creating multiple products per commitment term that you're going to support in your environment, mostly because of the variance in rate plans. So in this example here, we would have M365 Business Premium Annual and M365 business premium monthly. This is likely a format or template of the nomenclature you might use to differentiate on your agreements or contracts for customers so they understand why there's a variance and why there's two line items of potentially the same product that they get from you. So this is mostly built again for the fact that monthlies will be 20% premium over the annuals but one of your first steps when you're thinking about going into NCE is going into your PSA tool and creating a product for all the term commitments you're going to support in the future as, as well as obviously current state and sense of priority. So with that, that kind of leads greatly into the contract and agreement considerations as well too. So with new commerce, you're likely to be evaluating your contracts with your customers. You should be updating those based off of the new term commitments with Microsoft. I touched on all this in my previous video about reducing liability, but there's a possibility that you could be updating your contracts in PSA as well too, to reflect those changes or just starting fresh with new commerce and, and creating new contracts to accommodate. So you'll run into this scenario again where you have these various commitment terms. So annual paid monthly, you're likely to continue to write down or, or sync to a monthly contract or monthly agreement. The annual prepay, you're likely to move into an annual agreement or annual contract that really shouldn't be changing for you. And then monthly, as you do today, is moving into a monthly agreement or contract. Now again, we can run into the scenario of a single product being purchased with multiple subscriptions with multiple different commitment terms. And so in your PSA tool, you could still have this concept of seeking over having the annual paid monthly and monthly on the same contract or agreement because likely it's going to be the same product. Or you could have that. Uh, the major consideration though in complexity that we get into is when you start talking about renewal dates and the 72 hour window of cancellation or decrement on these subscriptions. 
So whenever you talk about renewals with Microsoft now with NCE, your renewal date with your subscription is on a per subscription basis. And it's whenever you upgrade, meaning you move from legacy to new commerce product, or it is when you purchase net new. So it is likely that you'll have many different renewal dates now for your customers. Now, if we scope this down in the sense of this, just this one customer and these products that they're purchasing, I can still sync this and let's just say that the renewal here for this product, it's going to be 0201. 2023 because it's an annual and the renewal here on this one is going to be 03-01-23. So it means I purchased this one on February 1st and my renewals uh, next year in 2023 and it means that I purchased this one on February 1st or upgraded on February 1st and my renewal is a month from now so on 3-1. So essentially here and I should say, I apologize, this should be 2022 because it's rolling up into the next month. So the fact that these two are the same makes things a little bit easier for us. I can simply set a cancellation date on my agreement or contract within the PSA tool. I can assign that to a contact as well too to automate some of the renewal notifications when it's up 30 days for renewal. And with monthlies, I could just tell my customers, hey, you need to tell us what your seat count is before the first of the month and we can adjust that for your next month's billing. This is a big deal now that you keep on top of this because again, you're not able to decrement over the course of the term. And it's key to point out that's not only with annuals, it's with monthlies as well too. Meaning that you cannot decrement seats until your renewal date uh, comes due and you can only increment during your time. So a lot of this complexity I'm gonna focus in on decrementing midterm because that's where, where this comes into play. So in this example here, there's not a whole lot of complexity because I can just tell them that they need to get their seat changes in by the first of the month, and then I'll not notify them before the contract's over for their first annual as well. The complexity though comes into play where you may have upgraded or purchased these on two separate dates. So let's say instead of 3-1 for this monthly, you did it on uh, the third of the month. So the renewal would be 3-3-22. This becomes a big problem because not only obviously you have these disparate dates here, you are essentially not able to decrement until that third comes due, which is your renewal period where you can decrement the seat counts. I'm assuming that a lot of you bill out on the first of the month, which means that essentially you'd be having to pay for the full amount of the month. And there's no way you could tell the clients, hey, I need your seat count changed by the first of the month because you can't actually physically change that in the Microsoft portal or in your distributors portal until you hit that renewal date. So the key piece here, if I was to walk through all of this, you would have to continually charge them the first of the month and then they could change their seats on the third and you could decrement back down. You would then get a some type of credit relief for the delta change from your distributor and then you'd have to give them a prorated reconciliation credit on their April invoice, if that makes sense. That's really getting into the weeds here, but I want to stress the point and complexity of this nightmare of having these disparate dates for your subscriptions for your customers. So in this situation, if I had this, it would beg the question of having a separate agreement or contract per commitment term or per subscription in this case, because my renewal dates are different. I want to have that automation for my customer to know, hey, you have you know seven days until I need to know when these subscriptions are going to be updated. But this, from your standpoint as well too, just greatly enhances your operational complexity from managing this, which is why my number one recommendation around moving to NC or purchasing NC products is to try to stick to the first of the month for those upgrades, because essentially, if you get into this scenario and you think about doing this on random dates for all of your customers, you're going to have this organizational nightmare of having to maintain all these dates of which you can go in and decrement or increment. Um, really, it's, it's really decrement, I should say. Increments you can do mid-month and they'll prorate and you can move that uh, up moving forward. But decrements are really where it's hard during the life of the commitment and it gets really hard with monthlies now as well too and how you bill out for those um, additionally. So essentially here, I would just pay attention to all this and, and really try again to stick with the first of the month 
And if you do have disparate dates for the subscriptions underneath a single customer, develop different contracts or agreements to supplement that as well, uh, just to accommodate for those various changes and get some type of automation behind how you're alerting them. So the next thing I want to do here is just walk through an example. Uh, this is going to be using ConnectWise and essentially here we're going to have the customer situation of, hey, they're on BP Monthly today and they're going to be converting into a mix of BP Monthly and BP Annual commits, both paid monthly though. So essentially we have this customer here, they're going to have those two separate subscriptions now instead of the single one. So your step-by-step -step walkthrough here for that particular customer would be to create two products for NC if you don't have them already for the business premium monthly. Um, bake it in with those 20% premiums and then the annuals you'll write as well too as a separate product. You'll upgrade your existing subscription into the NC annual as your base level product. You can adjust the seat count at that time before committing and upgrading into the annual. Again, try to do this on the first of the month just to align with your billing terms within ConnectWise and to avoid also any type of proration complexity. Um, I think that's huge as well too. Really get into the weeds when you talk about upgrading mid-month because of credits you get back and as, as well as the, uh, the prorations you could potentially charge to the customer on the PSA tool side of the house. So again, just focus in on really trying to upgrade those around the first. You need to add the new edition. It's going to be an open dated edition in ConnectWise. In um, Autotask or anything like that, you'll just have your start date there with your quantity for the new line item for the NCE product. And then you're going to make sure you close date your old edition. This is assuming that you're going ahead and syncing to an existing agreement that you had these legacy ones on. You're going to close date that old edition there. If you're having a new contract, obviously you don't have to worry about that. You're just canceling that contract and writing these over net new. The other piece here, you need to go in and, and purchase the new NC monthly to get the separate subscription going for that, and then add that as another open addition on your contract as well, or your agreement in PSA. So essentially here, this is just a high-level workflow of converting and then moving that into PSA as far as a high-level example. If you were to upgrade mid-month or convert mid-month as far as the increments goes, you would simply be um, going ahead and adding a prorated charge. At that point in time, the increments you do mid-term co-terminate, which is good, at least there's that. Um, so essentially there, you would just be adding prorations throughout the mid middle of the term if you have any, and then all of those uh, top-level quantities would, would co-terminate on their renewal dates. So these, these are some of the major considerations there from code terms and, and just examples. I quickly wanted to go into the pricing example as well, or pricing changes really. So essentially here with New Commerce we have some trickling milestones that we go through where there's either price increases or we have time bound promotions. So when we think about the examples here again, we have our price uptick in March 1st of six different SKUs, Business Basic, Business Premium, E1, E3, E5, and M365 E3. They're all going up by about 10 to 15% in price. And then we have our time-bound promotions here as well too, which consist of the 5% discount on annuals. And then we have monthlies at annual rates. So this first one here lasts until end of March. And then this one here lasts until end of June. So your major considerations here obviously is when we go through these pricing changes, either update your existing agreements, whether they're on legacy or not for the price increases. And then you have uh, some updates as well too, if you've upgraded to NC already and these time bound promotions end. 
So what I would do with the promos here is I would just make sure that all my agreements or contracts end date at the life of the promo. That way you can adjust the contract accordingly at that point in time and create a new and you can have notifications about it. So there's a little bit uh, less of a headache when thinking about automating that process. You could do the same with the monthlies at the annual rates um, until June or July, or you could just go across all of your clients and make sure that you have that 20% premium now baked into those line items after that promotion is, is completed. If you're working with a distributor with an integration, they may have some automation around this too. So it's good to check with them when you talk about rate plan changes and how they might sync those to PSA tools. So that's, that's another major consideration here when you talk about the milestones of NC outside of the co-terms, cancellation window, and the, the contracts and agreements that you'll be syncing to. So with all that, I, I have some high-level recommendations based off of what I went over today. And I know this was quite a bit, especially with the different renewal dates on, a, on an agreement or monthly uh, agreement or contract basis. Um, but these are some of the recommendations that I would, I would go with. Um, high level one, upgrade or purchase first of the month. Again, try to stick with that. If it was me, I would try to do this for all my clients or at least have one date of which they all have a very similar renewal if you can. And that is essentially to reduce your operational complexity with the increments and the time of which you can increment. Again, work with your distributor on that because they may have a way to uh, schedule the decrements as well too, so you don't have to like exactly come in on a specific day to decrease seats or anything like that. There should be a, a scheduling functionality. You want to create those products for the various commitment terms that you're going to support in your PSA tool and the product catalog. That way you can differentiate between the various price points between the commitment terms. You want to create uh, separate agreements, contracts, if your renewal dates are different. Um, this is what I would do personally. Again, you don't have to, but I think you have to start uh, brainstorming ways of which you would automate some of that renewal complexity that you're going to have to deal with now with the customers. So I would essentially do that, and I think ultimately there's an inevitable standpoint of which they're going to have different renewal dates because they might buy business standard today, six months down the line they want business voice, and then you have to go into that contract and that's a whole different renewal date. Um, so I, I would think that you would want to do two separate agreements for those types of terms as well. The other one here is you want to align the contract termination with the promos, like I just mentioned here about the pricing changes. I think that's a good way to then move all the price points uh, to what they should be for the long term versus these timeout promotions that we have right now. And then um, if you have leveraging or you're leveraging existing contracts or agreements for your PSA tool today, instead of creating new ones, if you're using the, the existing ones, just make sure you close date those old additions for the uh, legacy line items just because you'll double bill the customer if you do not. So those are all the things that I wanted to cover today. I know this was really uh, much in depth. I will have a blog post available as well too to kind of walk through everything I talked about today, probably some more additional detail as well too, just for examples that you can reference over time without having to rewatch this video over and over again. If you have any recommendations that you find valuable, uh, please comment them below. I think the, the community helping each other is really gonna be the best route here. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below too. Otherwise, like or subscribe to the channel if you guys want to see more content around Microsoft and the MSP space. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.